Recently, we looked at how we can create a, an attraction to surface type effect using pops, but you may not know that you can actually do this inside of a rigid body simulation as well. So let's take a look at that. So this project file is going to be available on Patreon, so if you'd like to grab it, you can do so there. And the kind of theory of this video is available in a different video. I'll have that linked here, so if you want to learn the theory of this, you can do that there. Let's drop down a geometry node and let's disable our first uh, node there. And then let's drop down a pig head. That's going to be our, our collider geometry here. And we don't need a shader. Let's just set this to hard. And this has a hole on the bottom. So let's drop down a polyfill and just close up that hole on the bottom. Set that to a single polygon. And then let's wire that into a null. And like I said, this is going to be the geometry that we use as our collider for our, our rigid body simulation. So let's name it out collider. And then let's create our rigid body. So I'm going to drop down a sphere. I'm going to make this a polygon. Let's actually set our flag there and then do the template, our pig head. And I'm going to crank up the scale here, maybe even a little bit more than that, and set this to like... 30 subdivisions and then I'm going to drop down a mountain node to break up our surface here and just play around with these settings a little bit. We can drop down a scatter node now and let's set the force total count to maybe like 300 and then let's drop down a second sphere. Let's make this polygon and make this like 0.1 scale and let's drop down a copy the points now and we can see what this has given us. So we've got a bunch of points here that are being copied to all those, or a bunch of spheres being copied to all those points. Let's also make sure we uh, just check this pack and instance, and we should be good. We can drop down our bullet solver now, and we're gonna wire that into the first input and our pick hit here. Let's wire that into the fourth, this collision geometry. Then we can take a look at that. Let's go to the first frame here. And let's come to the forces and just disable gravity so that we don't have any gravity because we don't want these to just fall straight down. And I'm also not going to worry about making a floor or anything because we want them to move around the pig head here. So let's dive into the rigid body solver there. And we need to set up the attraction to the surface. So we can do that with a couple of different nodes here. Let's start off with the pop attract. And the pop nodes work just directly inside of this as well. So if I have this force just cranked up a little bit, I press play, you can see what we get. So they're already colliding with the pick head, which is what we're looking for, but they're not being attracted to the surface. They're just kind of going towards one point in space, which is what this is set up to do by default. So let's change this over to surface points and let's set up that pig head as our collider as the object that we want to attract to. And we'll need to do something else with that here in just a second, but let's drop down a wrangle to create that effect where it's, it's attracting to the surface or the closest point on the surface of the geometry. So a pop wrangle, let's set our inputs. Our second input, we're just gonna set this to a stop and let's just make this that collider again. And then we can come to our code. I'm gonna press Alt E and then I can press Control and plus to just make the size a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. And in here, I need to do a couple of things. And this is where the theory from the other video kind of comes into play and we're just kind of gonna rebuild part of this. So we need an integer, so we'll do I at, and we'll call this my goal prim. And I explain this way better and in a lot more detail in those videos. So check out them if you want to learn more and then we'll drop down a or we'll also write a vector out so v at and we're going to call this my goal prim ev and then we need to write to an integer so we'll just calculate out our our distance here so we'll call this integer goal prim and this is just a variable that's going to stick in here it doesn't really matter because we're going to be using what we write to in here so we need this to be an integer, so we'll use the floor function to convert this to an integer because we're going to use the XYZ distance function, which is going to give us 
a float value. So we're going to access the second input or what basically the collider that we set up in our inputs here. So the second input is going to be a one because the first input is a zero. So one, and then we're going to access the position. So at P and then we'll do at my goal prim and we're writing to these variables now. So, and then we'll also do at my goal prim UV and that's all we need to do there. So I can hit apply now and accept and I can press control and minus in here to bring that back down a little bit. And then on our pop attract, we need to select this vex, use vex expressions and come to this little drop down arrow and select pass through. And that just sets everything up for us pretty much, except for we need to change this goal prim to I at my goal prim. And then we should be pretty much set up here. So if I press play, it's going to attract to the closest point on the geometry. They're gonna kind of move around and kind of bounce off as they see fit. And we can kind of force a little bit more movement if we use a pop wind node. So we'll do pop wind. And we can crank up the amplitude a little bit here and maybe swirl slice and replay our sim. And that's just gonna give us some movement kind of being brought towards, but maybe I don't want them to just kind of fly all over the place as they're far away from the geometry. Maybe I want them to kind of start off just being brought towards the center and as they're kind of closer to our object, we want them to have some of this wind affecting it. So we're gonna create a pop group, not pop grains, pop group. And this pop group, we're going to come to this bounding regions, enable that, and we're gonna set this to a bounding object. And then let's jump up here and let's create that object. So we want them to be, or when they're kind of around the pig head here, so we can drop down a peak node, kind of wire in our collider there. If I take a look at this, this is what we have so far. We can kind of crank this out a little bit, maybe just a little bit, maybe something like that, I don't know. And then we'll drop down another null and we'll call this out uh, group bound sure and then let's set this back to the bullet solver let's dive in here and go back to this sop path bring this back over here and let's go up to that group bound object that we just created and then we can come to our wind here and then select the group and then we only want to affect by restart this we're not going to have that because we have to simulate let them kind of come closer and then this should pop up at some point in time or not. Uh, it's because we didn't give them a group name. That's why. Uh, let's call this, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe allow wind. There we go. Now we have what we should be seeing. My mistake there. Now if we simulate kind of forward, once we have particles go in there, we should have that pop up or not. Still not liking that. So we'll just set this, oops, set this back to allow wind. And then that should give us what we're looking for. Not sure why I wasn't popping up there, but either way, now that as they are closer to the object there, they start to get that wind and we are not preserving that group in the pop group. So they should kind of break away and then come lose that wind effect and come back. So that is kind of the gist of how we can go about creating this type of effect where these rigid bodies are moving along the surface of the object and kind of being attracted to the closest point on the object. You can dial this in a lot more if you want, kind of play around with it in the video or in the actual intro animation. I went and animated a noise over this geometry, which if you do that, you just need to come to this collision and actually part of what we're having here, if I take a null, is they're not fully attracting to the right spots. If I take a null and look at our, let's see, proxy, it's not, oops, actually we don't need to do that. That is for other 
simulations. If you take a look at our visualization and come to show collision shape, you can see that we're not getting what we exactly want with our collision. So we need to come to this collision shape and set this to concave. And now you can see that we're getting our pig head. And if you have this uh, animated, this geometry animated, you can come to this collision type and make this deforming and then it will actually show the deforming geometry. So now we should have things kind of coming closer to where they should be, but you see we still have a couple of issues, mainly that you can see this particle right here, that's as close as it gets because of our collision padding. So if we drop this down quite a bit here, if I press play now, we should have those particles getting a lot closer to the surface of the geometry, but you can see they basically touch right there, which is more what we're looking for. So play around with the collision padding, get it to where you want, and you can play around with the, uh, the bounce and the friction and all that as well. You can turn this down if you would like, and then they should slide around a little bit easier on the geometry, but you can dial in those settings as you see fit. That is kind of the gist of how we can go about creating this type of effect. If you'd like to know how I created the random colors and everything on the spheres and rendered that all out inside of Redshift, then you can grab that in the project file, but I'm not gonna go over that in this video because it's not super complex. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. Like I said, this is kind of based around the same sort of effect that we generated inside of the, uh, the pop solver, but it is also available inside of the rigid body solver so I wanted to wanted to cover that because it is kind of a cool effect to have these rigid bodies being attracted to the surface of an object and kind of bouncing off each other and just moving around with the rigid body physics so pretty cool stuff but anyways like I said hopefully this helped you out this is a kind of part three to this little series on this attraction to the surface so if you're a little bit confused you can check out the other videos and they should go a little bit more in depth and I also have a couple of live streams that go over this as well so we go over the in quite a few different ways so just take a look at that if you're interested but anyways if you're interested in learning more about Houdini make sure you check out the other videos on my channel I go over a ton of different types of effects inside Houdini check those out if you're interested but anyways thank you guys for watching and have a good day